Hello everyone, I am Vaishnav Achat from Texas Instruments and I would like to talk to you today about using Graybus for robotics and real-time uh, applications using Sephiratos. I work with the Texas Instruments Linux development team and TI has a strong history of open source collaboration and contribution and we plan for long-term sustainable products with an open source ecosystem in mind from the device architecture phase itself. And we also focus on an upstream first methodology in our internal and external development as well. As part of my day job, I work primarily on Linux kernel and U-boot for TI devices. And I also maintain the TI devices in the Sephiratos. I was introduced to uh, Grebus and Sephiratos through a Google Summer of Code project with Beagleboard.org in 2018, where I worked on enabling support for these microbus add-on boards uh, in Linux. So microbus add-on boards are these plug-in boards that goes to microbus sockets. So this is how I have planned the talk. We'll just go through an introduction to Graybus, then developments on using Graybus for IoT, then Beagle Connect, and some limitations, and how I have a proof of concept to overcome these limitations. And then I also have a short demo where I have something, a real-time control loop running through Graybus. So what is Graybus? So Graybus is an application layer protocol which was developed as part of the modular smartphone project from Google called the Project Ara. So this was not released to market. So the concept of this smart modular smartphone was that you will have a base module smartphone, which will have some basic features like your processor and all, all basic features. It will have expansion connectors on which you can plug in different modules to it and create your own customized smartphone uh, according to what you want. So if, uh, if you want a higher resolution camera, you can plug it in, you get the camera. If you want a projector on your boot, uh, smartphone, you plug it in, you get that. So unfortunately, Projectara smartphones did not re reach the market. But something similar, the Motorola Moto Modes actually was released to the market. It uses similar concept. So we plug in modules, and we have your own customized uh, smartphone. So how does this work? Does you just plug in a module, and it just appears on your Android phone magically. So the underlying main uh, 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 subsystem that is there is the Grebus subsystem in, in the Linux kernel. So Grebus it has, it, you, you can think of Grebus like a remote, pro, remote procedure called like application layer, where the host can control and discover modules that are connected. So if you connect a camera module, the host, that's the base module, can detect what's connected on it through the Graybus manifest-based identifier mechanism. It can also send and like send commands to this module, get operations done, then get back results to the host. So what's different? So it's just an RPC protocol. So you just send messages, you have a handler on the remote side, get operations done, it comes back. So the main... Uh, uh -huh. The beautiful thing about Grebus is that so Grebus has strong ties within the Linux kernel, different multiple subsystems, and also Grebus has a well-defined module identifier mechanism, so which, uh, through which we can describe and discover the add-on modules connected. So if you look at Grebus and the Grebus underlying uh, code in the Linux kernel, you can see that multiple different peripherals or the buses have equivalent gray bus virtual representations in the uh, uh, kernel. So if you look at I square C, UART, SPY, USB, power management, PWM, camera, audio display, all those things have a virtual equivalent of gray bus in the Linux kernel. So with gray bus, what you can do is that, like, let's say you have you, you, let's consider your modular smartphone that runs Linux or Android, and you have your module. Let's say it's a module that has a GPIO expander, or let's say it has an I2C bus. You plug it in, and through the Grebus discovery mechanism, and 
it's actually appearing on the host as an actual bus. So you are mirroring an, a peripheral on the uh, add-on add -on module to the host Linux system. So the main concept, uh, the uh, concept behind Grebus is that to keep all the intel most of the intelligence within the host system, and these interchangeable modules can create your your own unique kind of systems. And these unique, the remote device, the add-on devices, always run some generic firmware. It does not have so let's say, it does not have any custom firmware. It's most more of a generic firmware. And here I would like to talk about some advancements in Grebus for IoT. So Grebus for IoT was first proposed by Alexandre, and he wrote the uh, base framework for using Grebus. And then Chris, who is a Sapphire maintainer, who he took up the, uh, he ported the, uh, originally the Grebus device side firmware was in the Natex Artos, and Chris ported the Grebus subsystem uh, to as, as a software module, uh, which, sub, which has, so then now we have the platform code and the application code loosely coupled, and any uh, platform that supports software can also use Grebus for software. So, and the primary tra transport being implemented is TCP IP, because you can send TCP IP over anything, and there are also other transport supported. So, and there is also user space applications uh, written by Alexandre, it's G-Bridge. So you can think of it as a bridge between your Linux kernel and your remote device. So in, in the actual project era or the motor modes, these modules were directly connected to the smartphone or the module, and it was talking through a transport called Unipro. Uh, which is a standard in the process communication protocol from EP. So now, the, but the Grebus being an application layer, there is no strict requirement that we should use it, the exact transport. We can use any transport. So we are just passing the messages to the transport. So what actually happens with this Grebus for Sapphire module, G-Bridge, and this ecosystem is that, so we have a remote node that runs Sapphire, and we have the Sapphire, Grebus for Sapphire module works on it. Now, what happens is, so let's say there is a GPIO chip on that remote module, uh, microcontroller. So that GPIO chip is getting mirrored to your host system through the Grebus, and the all the underlying, um, maybe the complexity of the RPC layer is abstracted away from the user. The user just sees a standard GPIO chip on the Linux system, uh, like it, it was actually physically present on the particular host. So now, let's say I use like I try to toggle this GPIO. I use some libgpiod standard commands and toggle this GPIO. So this is a standard GPIO chip interface in the kernel, but it's exposed by the Grebus GPIO driver. Then it goes to the Grebus core. It creates an operation, which goes to the G-Bridge, and it goes to the remote node. So it, how it goes to the remote node can be any transport. It can be wireless, it can be wired, it can be UART or anything. So on all my demos from now, I am planning to use the 802.15 for sub-G, low power wireless as a transport. And now it reaches the packet reaches the Sapphire node, it goes to the RX handler, then Grebus handler, then it goes to the Sapphire standard GPIO uh, call. So that's how a GPIO works. It's not only GPIO that's supported. Like earlier we saw what all peripherals or subsystems had equivalent Grebus versions. All those are supported. For the interest of Sapphire, Grebus for Sapphire or IoT, we are just focusing on SPI, I2C, GPIO kind of buses. So I told you, like, uh, the, right now we can use Grebus for IoT, and uh, like, I would like to introduce you to Beagle Connect and Beagle Connect Freedom. Beagle Connect is a revolutionary technology from BeagleBot.org, which uses this Grebus uh, for IoT. 
and device drivers in Linux kernel to virtually eliminate any low-level software development. So earlier we saw that GPIOs on a remote uh, microcontroller appears on the host as if it was already on the host. Now we can have I square C devices or spy devices appear on the host in a similar manner. Now think of it in the next level. So you have a device on the I square C bus. So now it, since the I square C bus appears as, as if it was on the host, you have that device also appearing on the host. So what you can do is you can reuse the existing device drivers in the Linux kernel to work with the sensors and actuators and devices that's connected on your uh, remote microcontroller through gray bus. And so now we are, uh, when uh, using the gray bus for IoT with the GBridge and different utilities, we are not tied to be using any uh, project or specific hardware or anything. This Linux, your host can be any Linux host. It can be your laptop. In my cases, I am using a Beagle Play uh, development board, which is one of the newest uh, single board computers from BeagleBoard.org. I am using that as a gateway, and it talks to the Beagle Connect Freedom, which is a wireless MCU from BeagleBoard.org, and it talks our low power sub gigahertz 802.15.4G. So uh, now what I have is a small demo. So I have this Beagle Play running the stock Debian image from BeagleBoard.org, and I have the Beagle Connect Freedom connected on a like on a separate room on a it far away from this gateway. So now what I'm doing is this there is some a script called start Beagle Connect Gateway. So it just sets up the network and pings this remote node, then also uh, starts the services like GBridge. So now what you can see is it's the host system, it's running Linux, this system is running Sephir. This is far away, and I am logging into the host Beagle Play. So in the kernel logs, you can see a light sensor and a humidity sensor popped up. So it, it was not ever actually connected to this system, but it was actually here. So this light sensor appeared on the host. I can use, sta use standard Linux utilities like IIO Info or any other higher level middleware utilities to get the sensor readings make measurements and all. And I did not even have to know that what sensor was connected or even the register map of this particular sensor because all the driver are we, we are using from the Linux kernel. And also in Linux, almost everything is a file. So reading sensors, reading, like controlling actuators, all just tend like, is simplified as simple file operations, and you don't need to do any low-level development. So this I showed for the light sensor and the humidity sensor that's on on this board. You can even add on all these uh, microbus add-on boards and make it work with the same system. We have tested with around 150 add-on boards. You can have this plug-and-play support and make it appear on the, your Linux host through Grebus. Maybe I'll stop a bit if you have any questions regarding how, like, this is the state of Grebus for IoT and Beagle Connect now. Okay, so, right, uh, like, earlier what happened with, during, like, the sensor reads and all was that, so we have a light sensor that works through like I square C. So it needs some I square C transactions to set up, like trigger the measurement, then get back the measurement. So through Grebus, we were sending all these uh, transactions and like continuously making all these measurements. So one failure, one uh, uh, this can really uh, simplify a lot of IoT applications where you don't want to do low level development, but you want to focus on your middleware or your actual application, and you just want to prototype different sensors, you want to try out different systems, and you are more interested in your 
final application more than getting any particular sensor work, work on any different particular board. So uh, I experimented with, with the Beagle Connect Freedom and Grey Bus for IoT and all, and few things I found was that, so in the Project Tara smartphone, the uh, host uh, module, and you are actually physically plugging it into the, the add-on modules to the actual smartphone. So there is so the and the purpose like the, and the functionality is only useful when the host is active. So in IoT applications, your central gateway or the node is sending the commands to the remote node. But even if the gateway go, goes down, you might want to have some operations happening in your remote nodes. Let's say, for example, you are deploying a a weather monitor or an air quality monitor. So you are continuously pulling this data from the sensor, but uh, let's say your host goes down or the connectivity between your host and the remote uh, is uh, like not working. Then the, your complete system kind of goes down, but let's say what if you could have offload to the remote node, it compute the average sensor readings continuously for a day and your host will go and uh, read back the sensor reading after a day or once per day. And in the previous case, you are, you are continuously polling, so you are continuously sending Grebus operations to read do these I squared C transactions and making the readings. Uh, so it's also not very power efficient in some use cases. So if you could offload to do it something like, let's say, take a reading, then wait for a timer, like maybe suspend, wait for a timer, wake up, then uh, make the reading and do average. So you could optimize uh, it for some use cases where power is also critical. And we can, so in the project era use cases, the transport was very, the continuous reliable and very high speed pro uh, transport. In IoT use cases, we could have low data rate, transports like the sub gigahertz, long range communications. So before how we could uh, uh, just like make some changes to overcome these limitations, I would just like to talk about how a Grebus operation looks like. So I'm not going into the details of Grebus setup and all, so one, this operations you can think of each Grebus transaction as an operation, and the, all these operations will have a short header, then a variable length payload. So this payload will be depending on particular operation. So let's say you, in the earlier case, we talked about toggling a GPIO. So how the Grebus packet, uh, operation packet for the toggling a GPIO looks like is we have an operation header, it, it has fields like size, ID, then there is a field, important field called type. So t with the field type is how the particular handler is being called. So if the type is the, like, if the type is GPO set value, then the GPO set value handler at the remote node is called. There is also concepts of C ports, but for simplicity, we are just talking about how the handler is involved. And the payload is actually uh, specific to each transaction. So for this particular GPIO set value, you'll have a payload saying which and value. It's the offset on the GPIO chip and what's the value to set the GPIO to. So one of the difficulties I faced during this prototyping or working with Grebus is that Grebus has a complex stack starting from your Linux kernel, then netlink to the user space, then the user space application that bridging to the remote node, and you, you need to have a Grebus for Sapphire remote node uh, functional to do any prototyping. So I wanted to isolate some parts of the system and test few parts, so I kind of combined the Grebus kernel functionality and Gbit functionality into a small Python library. It does not implement all the functions, but only few of them functionality that's of interest. And with this, what you can do, do is Sephir has a native POSIX target. You can do CI and you, testing, or you can do prototyping on your host itself. Uh, 
Your remote node will be a Zephyr POSIX target executable that runs on your host, and your Grebus host side and the kernel side will be a simple Python library that triggers this transaction. So here is a proof of concept I have for overcoming some limitations we discussed regarding using Grebus with kind of slow or unreliable transports. So we can just uh, send transaction Grebus operations one by one and execute at the host together. So we can do, some, let's say you have a sensor which has something like an enabled GPIO. Then you, read, you enable the sensor using a GPIO toggle. You read the uh, data over I square C, then you disable it. So you, maybe you can combine all these, uh, send one by one, and ask the remote node to maybe execute it together. But this kind of approach is not useful in most cases because you need to have some decision-making capability at your remote node. So what I have added is that you have allocated some scratch pad kind of registers, or you can say it, it can be considered as temporary variable, or a temporary memory region, where the host can write constants, read back the values, and also the host can perform uh, arithmetic operations on this scratch pad. So all these are new Grebus operations I added. So you can read to this register region. You can use this as a temporary holding register variable. Read, write, and also do perform arithmetic. You can do a few more things. You can do uh, make another Grebus operations payload to this scratch, scratch pad, or use this scratch pad region as the payload for another operations. So for example, you read an I square C sensor data using, let's say, I square C read word. You get the sensor data. You can actually put it to the scratch pad region for further processing. Then we need some decision making and iterating operations. So I added two operations for if and while. All this takes the input conditions or operands from the scratch pad region. So you can do like if scratch pad uh, register 5 is true, then perform some operations. Or while scratch pad register is uh, true, you can do some operations. Then also a simple playback option where you can combine all these previous building blocks. You can kind of put a sequence together, send it. You can play it together, or you can even ask to play it indefinitely as well. So this is the operation. So one deviation I made from the Grebus specs or the existing Grebus operations is that so far all the Grebus operations have a short header and single payload. So in my extended operations, all these payload can be different operations. So you can put multiple operations inside the if, while, and all. So this is the scratch pad of operation like you can specify an offset, that's the kind of, you can say, register number or variable number. And then the, you can also, I already told, like, you can write another operations result also in the scratch pad region. Then you can perform mathematical operations as well. So most of the usual ones are implemented. Then there is decision making and loop operations. So, I have just put, like, there is an example of an if, if operation. So so I just wrote to the scratch pad register 5, 1. Then if, op, and 5 means that if that scratch pad register is true, then we'll go to the if, otherwise we won't. So I am doing a manifest read operation, then decrementing it. So if I run this again, then it, this if won't be executed on the remote node. So this is actually going to be executed on the remote node. Uh, then I'm just doing an I square C read byte and write, uh, write that particular read byte value to the scratch bad registers. Uh, similarly, you're, I'm performing a while, so this, will, this while will run five times. So I just wanted to see whether can this set of operations mm, allow me to make a robot. So I wanted to run a control loop on 
using this set of operations. So what I did was I used a Beagle Connect Freedom, hooked it up to a small line tracer robot. So it has some few IR reflective sensors, which takes inputs. And so if it deviates from the line, we get the uh, IR sensor input. So we can compute the error. According to the error, we control the motors. So in the normal gray bus over I like uh, for IoT, you can send this transaction over the remote or uh, over the sub gigahertz wireless. But I did try it. The latency is, was kind of 50 milliseconds per transaction. And you cannot actually do a control loop with that kind of latency. So what I have done is that like I have put the sequence in the sim with using the similar the previously described operations and try to offload the control loop to the remote node. So here I have the demo. So this is also being developed, uh, run on a Beagle Play as a gateway. And so I'm doing the network setup. And it's running the same gray bus firmware as earlier. Uh, and also, you can see the okay. so I'm just showing that there are onboard sensors that shows up in the kernel also as before to just show that it's the exact same firmware. So I just started a Jupyter notebook on the Beagle Play, and I'm just doing all the, since it's a prototyping, I'm just uh, doing it on the, using the Python. So, so I'm just like running all those. And so in the end, what you'll have is that, so you can describe different transport also using this library. So I'm just using the TCP IP. So you can see, I, I am. So in the end user gets interfaces like the Beagle Connect Freedom dot get manifest or Beagle Connect Freedom dot set GPIO offset. It, it's an easy user interface for the end user. Like, and this is not using the kernel Grebus now. So I'm just showing the Grebus manifest, which is the module identifier information. So this Jupyter Notebook has all the different operations implemented, and I have added it in the references as well. So here I am trying to read the onboard sensors on this board through like Grebus transactions, but not generated from kernel, but from this experimental Python module. And for that robot, there was also a PWM microbus add-on clickboard that was used to control the motor speeds. So this was some failed prototype. I tried to maybe try to con run the control loop over wireless. It did not work. So this is the final code that it Look, kind of looks ugly like assembly, and you have different operations where I kind of calculate the error, control the motor according to this. And so right now I have dispatched this sequence to a Beagle Connect Freedom on a line tracer robot. And you can see that's running a control loop, but there is no actual firmware load or firmware change on that uh, device. I'm just sending a sequence of operations that I'm offloading a sequence of operations to that robot. And the control loop is run locally. So once that set of operations are sent out, the even if the gateway goes down or the host goes down, that will still continuously be running. And in addition to that, when it's running, you can control parameters of that control loop as well from the host. So that also, I'm doing it now. So I have some helpers to just 
uh, the update the speed it just change, changes the PWM duty cycle. So the control loop is running offloaded to a separate thread and it's running in parallel and then you can also send more sequences or more operations and uh, do more things in this at the same time. So I am changing the motor speed from the it's being done remotely, but the control is loop is not affected at all. You can change, do other things. You can interrupt the control loop as well. I, st I stopped the robot. I can make it go back, then do the control loop again. So all this you are not doing with any firmware load. It's a generic firmware. You are just offloading different operations over Grebus to the device. So one nice application I could find was, so when we used to make these kind of robots while we were in college, so what we used, we had a challenge of tuning these PID parameters. We used to take out the robot, then say update the parameters, then put it back, update and do it again. So now you have, you are developing all, all this on your host system and you can have like interface with more and more middleware like, so let's say you have on the scratch pad, uh, registers you have something like a KPK, IKD, and your control loop takes that as an input and it runs in parallel. And you can send a message to update these values from the host continuously without taking out the board. So you can interface with more and more middleware like ROS or other middlewares since you are doing all the development on your Linux host system. So yeah, I admit the interface available to program or send the sequence of operations, it's not very straightforward. It's kind of some, like you are sending an if, then it's slightly difficult and not very straightforward. But the way how Grebus for IoT with the Beagle Connect Freedom comes up, it's very straightforward and you are just using the sensors and devices on the remote module as if it was on the Linux, uh, the, your host, and you also have device drivers getting probed with them. So you may not be able to directly use it as that, maybe and as an add-on to that, if you want to do offload control loops or other operations, you can use this. And right now, how it's implemented is you send a group of messages and it's offloaded to a thread. So if you run more than one kind of loop, you will need to take care of the synchronization yourself. So I have attached the references for all the related works. Also, I have added the details and instructions, this Jupyter notebook. You can, you don't need actual hardware. You, I tried it on Beagle Connect Freedom and Beagle Pay, but it runs on the host itself. You can use this FR native POSIX target, build it, and uh, do development experimentation on the host itself. So this work takes input from a lot of different related works. So I would like to thank them all, and thank you all for listening. Yes. Um, what's the status of the upstream patch for, um, for um, the micro bus? Yeah, I'm planning to find time for that. We have plans. <laughs> have you gotten any additional comments or from, from any, anybody on that recently, or is that done? No, not yet. So you want a way to make do some decision making on the remote node. So for that, you are using the scratch pad as temporary variables. So let's say you perform an I square C read, 
put it to the scratch pad register, you write an, a, another constant to another scratch pad register, you perform a comparison, you can do uh, different actions like that. It's kind of temporary variables. I think both of you have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if you so you want to create a gray bus virtual device with uh, with a keyboard on your remote node, it you want it to make it appear as an HID device on your Linux host. So only thing so and the everything it, that's written is generic. So I don't remember if we had implemented HID on the Sapphire side. There is already support in Linux side, so we might need to enable that. Let's assume that's enabled you will need to change the, the, the gray bus has a, uh, the add-on module uh, descriptor format called gray bus manifest. That's where we describe what all are there on the module. So you just need to have uh, update the manifest. So right now all you will need to refer to the gray bus specs document and update the manifest. And there is also a manifesto tool that creates this manifest binary. That also is a good, there are good references and on that tool as well. No, I have not talked to anyone yet. So I think like a, a bytecode interpreter like eBPF, that would be great. But one advantage that we have here is that y you can have like very large kind of operations as a single transaction. So if you think of I, a, an I2C read, if you want to do it using raw or you, you want to code it from scratch, then it will be slightly difficult and it will be platform dependent as well. So with the Grebus operation and the, the, the Grebus module running there, you can just send the standard Grebus message which says to do an I2C transfer. Yeah, I think that's just one benefit I saw. But if you really want to do any uh, like complex development, this way might not work really well. Yeah, um, Linux driver because the Linux device drivers does not have the information about that. So we, is there a way that you could, if you wanted to enable a specific driver as a, uh, a Linux kernel driver to have more macro-based operations, that you could put that into the driver level rather than putting it into um, the user's user application? Uh, I need to think about it. But right now, all these device drivers, the OPT301, all these we used was the direct device drivers. There is nothing for Grebus that we did on that. So what one way I can think is you can do some more complex operations using the Linux device driver, then do repeated transaction using this. Let's say you prop the device driver, perform calibration, all those complex operations, you offload it and get help from the device driver in the kernel, maybe repeated measurements we want to do, we can do it from the user space. Uh, 
Oh, I did not do a measurement like that. Sorry. No, I did not do a benchmarking we should do. Maybe I was, so without this extension, I could not run that control loop even if I was sending the transactions one by one. But with this, I can run that control loop. So I did just did at that kind of comparison. Okay, thank you everyone. So without, so uh, I think the update rate I could achieve was around one kilohertz, two kilohertz range. So without that, I was kind of at 25 hertz. Thank you. Yeah.